The Little Gray Donkey Once upon a time, there was a merchant who carried his goods on the back of a donkey. At the end of each day, he would look for some rich fields of barley and rice. Then, when no one was looking, he would throw a lion skin over the donkey, turn him loose, and let him eat to his heart's content. When farmers saw this creature in the twilight, they thought he was a lion and didn't dare come near him. The merchant became cocky. He thought, I sell to the people by day, and I rob them by night. I am so tricky. I am so smart. One sunny day, as the merchant was having breakfast, he let his donkey loose in a rich barley field with a lion skin on. These farmers were so stupid, they won't know the difference between day and night, he thought. The farmers did think it was the lion again, but this time they summoned all the other villagers, who descended on the field waving hoes and rakes and beating drums and gongs. The donkey was scared out of its wits. He gasped and brayed, hee-haw, 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 and the lion skin fell off his back. When the farmers saw it was only a donkey, they roared with laughter. They chased him away with hoes and rakes and beating drums, and they chased his master away as well. Don't be deceived by a donkey in a lion's skin. The Clever Crab One summer, long ago, a fish pond was rapidly drying up from the lack of rain. A crane on the bank said to the fish, I know of a pond deep in the woods where there is plenty of water. I could carry you there one by one. No crane ever wants to help a fish, said the king of fish. If you don't believe me, said the crane, I'll take you there and bring you back and you can tell all the other fish about it yourself. The king of fish figured he would just as soon be eaten by the crane as dry up in his pond, so he accepted the offer. The fish held onto the crane's neck with his fins and they flew deep into the woods. There the king of fish saw a great pond, cool and shady, pure and sparkling. Wonderful, said the king of fish. Now take me back so I can tell the other fish about it. So back they went. All the fish wanted to go to the great pond and the crane picked them up one fish at a time and carried them away. Not to the great pond, but to a cave where he ate them one by one. Soon he had eaten all the fish. There was only a crab left in the little pond. Crab, said the crane. I'll take you to the great pond as I did all the fish. Okay, said the crab, but you must let me hold onto your neck with my claws. The crane knew about the tight grip of crabs, but he was so hungry, he agreed. So the crab held onto the crane's neck with his claws and they flew into the cave. Okay, let go of my neck, said the crane. The crab looked around and said, I see no great pond. All I see is a great pile of fish bones. Yes, said the crane, and soon your shell will be all that's left of you. But the crab tightened his grip so sharply that the crane's head fell off. Not my shell, but your bones will be left to dry in remorse, said the crab, crawling away. After a few days, he found the great pond deep in the woods, cool and shady, pure and sparkling, and lived there happily ever after. If you cheat on the earth, the earth will cheat on you. The Monkey King Once upon a time, there was a monkey king who ruled over 80,000 monkeys. In his kingdom was a mango tree as big as the moon. The monkeys jumped all over the tree, eating the fruit and picking up those that fell to the ground. One of the tree's branches spread over a river, and sometimes a mango fell into it and floated downstream. Danger will come if a mango floats downstream, predicted the monkey king, and he ordered the monkeys to catch any mangoes that fell into the water. But one night, unseen by the monkeys, a mango fell into the water and floated far downstream. In the morning, when a human king who lived in a river palace went to take his bath, he saw the huge, beautiful fruit. After tasting it, he had to have more, and he set out with his men to find the source upstream. In the evening, after a long, hard search, they spotted the enormous mango tree full of lovely ripe fruit. Since the men were tired, they camped beneath it for the night. When all the men had fallen asleep, the monkey king with his 80,000 monkeys crept into the tree and moving from branch to branch, started eating up the mangoes. But the human king heard the monkeys and woke up. He called to his men, save the fruit, save the fruit. His men surrounded the tree and aimed their arrows at the monkeys. The monkeys trembled with fear, but the monkey king said, do not be afraid, I will save you. Quickly, he wound his tail around the branch of the tree that spread over the river, then leapt across the river and caught a branch of a banyan tree on the other side, making a bridge of his own back. Then he called to the monkeys, Come, monkeys, run out onto the branch, across my back, and down the banyan tree. The monkeys did as their king told them to. They were all safe and sound. The human king, witnessing this scene, was amazed. He thought, All I am doing is saving fruit, while this monkey king has just saved his whole troop. I have learned a great lesson today. He went back to his kingdom, forgetting about the fruit, and began doing good works for all his people. If the family lives in harmony, all affairs will prosper. The Golden Goose Once upon a time, there was a goose who had beautiful golden feathers. 
One day, flying in the heavens, the goose looked down and saw a very poor woman with two daughters all dressed in rags. The goose thought about the hard time they must be having and said to himself, If I gave them a golden feather, the mother could sell it at the market and they would have enough to eat. So away the goose flew to the poor woman's house. What do you want? said the poor woman angrily. I have nothing to give you. But I have something to give you, said the goose. And he pulled out one of his golden feathers and gave it to her. Then away he flew. The woman grabbed the feather and her daughters and off they went to the marketplace where they bought lots of good things to eat. From time to time, the goose returned, and on each occasion, he presented the woman with a golden feather, so that eventually they lived in comfort. But one day, the woman thought, I do not trust this goose. He may fly away and never come back. Then we will be poor again. We must pull out all his feathers the next time he comes. When she told her daughters, they cried, No, no, that will hurt the goose. We will not pull out his feathers. But the woman was very greedy. The next time the goose returned, she grabbed him with both hands and pulled out all his feathers. She didn't know that the feathers of the golden goose were magic, and if pulled out against his will, they turned a dirty white like soiled chicken feathers, and that is what happened. The woman could not believe her eyes. She cried in despair. Her daughters were horrified to see goose feathers scattered around. They gently lifted up the poor plucked goose and went into the woods. There they cared for him until his feathers grew back shiny and gold. To reward them for their kindness, the goose found them loving husbands. But because of her incredible greed, their mother lived worse off than before and new disasters greeted her every day. The greatest wealth is the wealth of kindness. One day, an old woman found two young pigs and brought them home with her in a basket. She named them Big Snout and Little Snout and treated them like her own children. In time, they became big and fat. Many people thought they would be delicious and wanted to buy them to eat. But the old woman always said, These are my children. How could I sell my own children? One festival day, some ruffians were eating and drinking. They wanted more food and remembered the old woman's two fat pigs. They went off to get them. Banging drunkenly on her door, they offered her money, but she would not take it. Then they returned with weapons, ready to take the two pigs by force. Little Snot began to tremble all over and cried, Today we are doomed! But Big Snot said, Do not be afraid, and he began reciting, The perfection of love, a great prayer that disperses all evil. Magically, his voice began to sound louder and louder and fill the old woman's house. It traveled outside, and the sound of love pierced the ears of the ruffians who put down their weapons. The sound of love traveled into the palace where it reached the king's ears. He asked, Who is making this lovely sound? He followed it back to the old woman's home, where he was amazed to find that the source of the sound was a pig. He honored the old woman of the grand palace where she and both pigs lived, clothed, perfumed, and jeweled. Five hundred royal guards protected them at all times. On holy days, Big Snout preached the perfection of love and peace, truth, and love reigned throughout the kingdom. Heaven remembers those whose hearts are true. The Magic Elephant Once a dazzling white elephant was born, and because of his great beauty, he became the elephant of the king. Adorned on festival days, he would carry the king through the streets and everyone would say, What a magnificent elephant! Since no one ever said anything flattering about the king, the king became jealous of the elephant and thought of a plan to get rid of him. The king summoned the elephant's trainer. This elephant is not well trained, said the king. Indeed he is, said the trainer. If he is, then he can climb to the top of the highest mountain, said the king. So the trainer mounted the dazzling white elephant and rode him up to the highest mountain's peak. The king and his courtiers followed in horse-drawn wagons. If he is so well trained, said the king, he can stand on three legs at the edge of the mountain top. The trainer signaled, and the elephant stood on three legs. Now make him stand on his two front legs, yelled the king. The elephant raised his back legs and stood on his front legs. Now on his back legs, roared the king. The obedient elephant raised his front legs and stood on his back legs. Now on one leg, screamed the king, and the elephant stood on one leg. If he is so well trained, screeched the king, make him stand on the air. Surely the king must want him to fall off the cliff, the trainer thought. So he whispered in the elephant's ear, Great white elephant, the king wants you to fall off the cliff to your death. He is not worthy of you. If you have magic powers, rise up in the air and fly with me to the next kingdom. And the great white elephant rose straight up into the air. The trainer then yelled down to the king, This great white elephant is too good for a worthless fool like you. None but a wise and good king is worthy to be his master. And off they flew to the next kingdom, whose wise king in time reduced the worthless king to ashes. Pride leads to a fall, but humility is rewarded in the end. 